Hello. So I'm Sarah Elwin and I'm going to be leading the final workshop in the Bouts Art School Online series. And today we're going to be learning how to make your own paints from things around the house. We're going to be using things like berries, spices and chalks, which might be allergens. So if you're a child watching at home, um, make sure you've got adult supervision. We're going to be uh, looking at this painting, it's called St Luke Drawing the Virgin and Child by made in the workshop of Bouts between 1440 and 1460 and we're going to be looking at this to see how um, paints might have been made in the past. So before I get into what materials we might need um, I'm just going to talk you through what paints are usually made up of. So they're usually made up of three things, a pigment, a binder and a liquid. So the pigment is what makes the colour and it's usually in a powder form. The binder is the thing that binds the colour to the page and the liquid is what makes the pigment spread and uh, yeah, makes it spreadable. So the things that you're going to need are you're going to need containers for all of your things. Um, I'm using chalk for white, just normal artists' chalk, turmeric for yellow, paprika for red, I'm using blueberries for um, like a dark blue purple colour, I've got raspberries and um, some strawberries for pink, and so they're the pigments, oh and I've got instant coffee for a brown colour. And then for a binder, we're going to be using vegetable oil. So that will make all of these things stick to the page. And I've got some water here for a liquid and um, to also rinse the brush. So then I've got a paper plate to mix everything on and I'm using just um, kind of normal cartridge paper. It's quite easy to find in like art books and stuff, but you could use printer paper um, and I was thinking maybe you could, if you did only have printer paper, maybe you could rough the surface to give it more of a, a, a rougher surface for the pigment to, to cling to. So, um, yeah, let's, let's start. Um, let's start by looking at um, the painting, actually. So, what you might notice is that the colours have more natural tones compared to paints that we have in art shops today. So there aren't any neon colours, for example. And this is because up until the beginning of the 20th century, artists or their assistants would have made the paints themselves from natural materials such as plants, shells and other dry minerals. And uh, this was mentioned in another Bouts Art School video, I think, by um, Rachel. Um, the colours often symbolise wealth because often the materials used to make richer pigments had to be imported from other countries, which was expensive. But we don't have to pay a lot for the ingredients we're going to use today because um, we can find them around the house or in a food shop. So let's start. So I'm going to start with a, sorry, that's my doorbell. I think maybe there's a, a pass or something. So let's start with red. So I'm going to use this paprika. Put it onto the page. And then I'm going to take a little bit of water, make it into a paste, like that. And then I'm going to take the oil, the vegetable oil, which makes it into a more viscous, viscous sort of paint. So it looks like that. And then I'll just show you how it makes quite a rich orangey red when you paint that on. It will be quite textured. Um, you can always scrape the text, the uh, grains off at the end because the what I found with these spices is that the colour kind of seeps into the oil and uh, colours the oil. So next let's try maybe a pink. So this one's a slightly different. 
way of doing it. So I've got these raspberries and strawberries here and I'm just going to mash them with a, a wooden spoon. The strawberry is a bit of an experiment, I haven't done it with a strawberry before. I think it's, it's also a bit better if they're a bit more ripe and are about to go off because then I don't know why, just the colour seems to be a bit stronger when it's like that. So we've got this sort of mushy, it doesn't have to be very, very mushed up. So then, you take your paintbrush. And I like to experiment with just going straight onto the page with this and then maybe adding a bit of oil afterwards. So you can see there how it's quite watery. That might be because I've got water from on my paintbrush from before. And you've got the bits there, which you can also scrape off at the end. So that's a pink. I'm just, I've got, also got some kitchen roll to wipe my thing up. And before I get my water too, too colourful, I'm going to just do the demonstration of white. So what I did here was I just had a stick of chalk like this and I just bashed it up with the end of a wooden spoon again until I got kind of a fine powder. So I'm just going to do a bit of mixing on my plate again. So this one works best with no oil, I found. It's more of like a watercolour paint. So, but the colour of the water will change the colour of the paint. So I've already made it a bit orangey, so it's going to be slightly, slightly orangey paint. So just mix that up. Oh, and for white, you can also use talcum powder if you don't have chalk. And I'm going to show you a demonstration on a bit of cardboard it's a bit easier to see but you can see how if you grow if you make the if you make it more powdery than I have it might be a bit smoother but you still get you can still see how even around the big um, particles it's still a white paint sort of more of a watercolor so that's the white rinse my brush okay so then we can go on to yellow this is similar to the paprika and this is turmeric so i'm going to take a big heap of that onto my mixing tray there get a bit of water make a paste and then a bit of vegetable oil again. You can also use mustard powder for yellow. So that's it there, mixing. Okay. So then that's quite a good strong one as well. And you can, you can um, lay them and, and make them more saturated or less saturated. For example, if I was just to take what's on my brush now, put it here, add more water, I'd get a more watered down effect. So you make it more watery. And you can see there how it's lighter and less dense. Um, what's next? Okay, blueberries is quite a fun one. So I was thinking about um, how you can make, so we've got white, but then how do we make a colour darker? So I thought using blueberries makes quite a dark colour. And although it's, it's, it's sort of harder to mix the blueberry because you'll see why in a sec. Um, you could sort of use it as an undertone um, and layer other colours on top. So what I do with the blueberry is I open it up 
And what you can do is you can rub the inside, you can rub the inside on the page and make sure you're kind of rubbing the skin onto the page and you get this dark purpley colour. It is a bit messy, this one. Um, but let me just... But it's very satisfying to do. Okay, and then you can sort of wipe off all of the all of the stuff and you've got this darker purple. Okay, and then um, the final one I'm going to do is brown. So I'm using instant coffee. I've already mixed a little bit of hot water in with this one. Um, but you can also use soil. So similar to the other to the other ways, you just mash up the soil with a with something like a with a wooden spoon or a pestle and mortar or something. And you just you can also use clay and you just add water and oil and um you get a sort of brown effect. So this is this is the instant coffee. And that's nice and dark. Oh, it's dripping onto the floor. So actually, maybe that would be better to use to mix, to make a colour darker. Maybe I'll try that. So I'm actually going to do, I'm going to try making a darker yellow. I'm going to just do it straight onto the page. So I'm going to mix in a bit of turmeric. And maybe a bit of uh, paprika. Maybe a bit more water. Okay, it hasn't really changed the colour that much, to be honest. I think the coffee's maybe very strong. Maybe you'd only need a little bit of coffee. But there we are. So, we've got... We've had the white, the paprika, the pink, the turmeric, the purple and the brown. And what you could also do is um, you can to make green you can do you can use leaves. So you can either rub the leaves straight onto the paper um, or you can kind of mash them up and um, make a sort of paste that way that you can rub onto the paper or use with a um, with a paintbrush, um, but you can you can sort of experiment with loads of different different things around the house. If it's if it looks if it's a powder and it's colourful, you can probably make it into a paint just by mixing it with the oil and the water. Um, I'm thinking maybe I could try and make an orange quickly, more of an orange by mixing the. I'm gonna try mixing the raspberry. So I'm gonna take some of this raspberry and mix it with a bit of the yellow. And you can see how that's making an orange as well. An alternative to the raspberries for like a pinky red or for the blueberries for a purple is you could use beetroot, you can use blackberries, you can use um, most berries you can use. So let's see. So that orange comes up quite faint. Faintly there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's very simple and um, you can just apply this technique to loads of different um, things, I think. So if you've made anything from this workshop, please use the hashtag um, Bouts Art School if you post it on social media um, to help us sort of 
do this thing in the future, we'd, we'd appreciate it if you could fill out an evaluation form. So if I just show you how to do that, if you go onto the Bowes Museum website, go on to learn, click young people, and then scroll down to um, Inspired by Bouts. Oh. Hello. My no, not that. Uh, oh, sorry. Bouts Art School. That's what it is. Okay. And then you scroll down. So these are all of the past workshops. And then this is the final one, which is mine. And then you can just press. There'll be a little button that comes up here that says download and fill in the evaluation form. And you just click there. It'll download, and that's what the form looks like. And then if you just email it to jessica.white at thebosemuseum.org.uk when you've finished, you can all also get a um, you can also get a free creativity pack if you do that, which will just include all of the materials that we've used today, including paper and spices. Um, this video will be uploaded to the Bose Museum website and as well as the IGTV on Instagram. And um, we hope that you've enjoyed the Bouts Art School series. Um, and the last final thing is that um, I'm also doing another free workshop in the grounds of the Bose Museum on the 26th of September. 26th, yep, just checking. 26th of September and it's about idea generation and how you can um, write your own narrative to form a painting or some image-based work. So that's free on the 26th of September at the Bowes Museum. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much.